Hello and welcome to yet another video. In this video, we'll talk about Cargo and how to use it to manage our Rust projects. This will not be an exhaustive feature tour, but we'll try to cover the most frequently used aspects of Cargo. We have a lot to cover in this video, so let's get into it. So Cargo is the package manager for Rust that helps you manage Rust projects. From Cargo's perspective, a project is simply a directory containing a bunch of .rs files along with a manifest file named cargo.toml which has a bunch of metadata information such as the name of the package, the version and its dependencies if any. There's also the cargo.log file which contains the details of your dependencies in a more granular way so as to have a deterministic and reproducible build. The log file is meant to be included in your version control for binary projects and should be ignored for library projects. There's a link in the video description if you want the exact details of the differences. So make sure you check them out. Now coming to the directory structure of a Cargo project, Cargo expects you to have either a main.rs file if you're creating an executable or a lib.rs file if you're creating a library. You can also create a tests folder for keeping any tests you have for the project and also an examples folder for keeping any starter code. Now, if you are a library author, the examples folder is useful if you want to provide starter code samples on how to use your library. So that's the basic overview of Cargo. Next, let's start by looking at the available commands we have for Cargo. Now, assuming you already have the Rust toolchain installed as shown in my previous video, you should have the cargo command available to you in the terminal. So if I try to run cargo without any arguments, we would get a help screen as shown here. And following are the available subcommands that we have. So let's take a look at one of the commands which we already used in, in our previous video, which is the new subcommand. So the new subcommand allows you to create a new cargo project. So by default, it creates a binary project. So if I tr try running cargo new demo, it will create the binary project. And if you want to create a library project, you can pass in the lib flag, and then the name of the package. And there you go, you have a library package created. Next, let's take a look at the build command. So I'll open one of the created projects and then I'll go into the main.rs file. And as you can see, it's a very basic level program. So if I try to go over to my terminal and invoke cargo build, I can build the project and by default cargo builds the project in debug mode. And the build artifacts are stored within target slash debug folder. As you can see we have the demo binary so we can invoke it just like any other binary and we have hello world being printed another way to run our binary in a single step is by simply invoking cargo run which will build and run our project at the same time now if you want to remove the generated built artifacts from a project we have the clean command so we will try running cargo clean and this will remove the generated target folder in our project now, in case of a library project, the cargo build command generates a different set of artifacts. So if you cd into target debug folder, you can see that we have a library with an extension of .rlib. This is a static library and Rust by default generates a static library. To generate a dynamic library, we'll need to make a few changes to our cargo.toml file. So I'll go to my cargo.toml file and I'll add in a lib section and within this section I will type create type and set this value to an array with the first value being cdylib and with this option we are indicating cargo to generate a dynamic library so if I go back to my terminal and I type cargo built and if we check our target debug folder you can see we have our library generated with a dot so extension so that's about the cargo build command next we'll take a look at the cargo test command so usually you will write two kinds of tests in a project unit tests and integration tests and cargo allows you to manage both kinds of tests 
in separate areas in your project. So usually unit tests are written within the same module with an inline module defined with a mod keyword and annotated with the config test attribute. So this attribute tells the compiler to only compile this tests module whenever we run cargo test command. Tests in Rust are simply functions annotated with the test attribute. So anything that starts with a pound sign is an indication to the compiler that it's a special attribute. So when you, whenever you type this attribute, this function is recognized by the compiler as a test. And within these function, I can then write a bunch of assert macros where you provide in an expression you want to assert against. And there are quite a few variant of these macros and we'll get to see and explain them in later videos. Once we have these macros in place, we can then run our test using the run tooltip option within our editor or we can go back to our terminal and invoke cargo test. And as you can see, the test name foo is shown right here. Now if we have a failing test case and if we then try to run cargo test again, we can see that the test harness shows us the failed tests. Now having taken a look at unit test, writing integration test is quite similar except that you put your test in a test folder in your root directory. So I will go ahead and and within the test directory I can create a file with .rs extension and within this file I can write my test as usual. So I will write a function test foo and where I will put an assert macro and this time I want to import one of the APIs within the demo lib library, which is the sum function. It takes in two numbers and returns their sum as the return value. So to import this function in our foo.rs file, we'll go back to foo.rs and here we can add a use statement with the name of the library, which is demo lib, followed by a colon and then the name of the function, which is sum. And now we can use this function within the assert macro. So as the first argument, I will type the sum of the two arguments that I'm going to be calling the sum function with. And let's try to run this test from our command line. So I will do cargo test or let's say if I want to just run this function selectively, I can copy its name and then I can run cargo test followed by the name of the function. And as you can see, we have the test results shown right here. So that was a very brief overview of cargo test. We will definitely cover testing more in depth in future videos. Next, we'll take a look at the cargo search command. So usually at some point in time, you will need to depend on a third party library for your project because the standard library doesn't cover everything. Fortunately, Cargo also has a site called crates.io where all third-party libraries are hosted. Here you can find a list of all the libraries created and maintained by the Rust community. So let's say I have a use case in my library where I need to parse a string and I'm looking for an implementation of regex. So I can type in regex in the search field and what I can see is the list of matched crates according to my search string. So I can then go click on this link and go to its homepage where I can find the version to include in my project. So I'll just copy this and then I'll go back to my project and within the cargo.tumble file, I will add in a dependencies section and then paste in the regex crate. Once the regex crate is added, I can then go back to my terminal and do cargo build. And this might take quite a while. So that's how you add dependencies to your project using the crates.io repository. But there is a better way to do this from the command line itself. I can use the cargo search command and search for the same crate which will give me the same list as presented on the web UI. So you can see at the very top, we have the same regex crate. And so this is a quick way to search and add dependencies to your project from within the command line itself. So next, we'll take a look at the cargo check command. So if you notice in the previous section where we built the project by adding the regex crate, 
the build times went quite high compared to our hello world program and that's because the code generation part of the compiler is the most time consuming step so in order to reduce the compilation time and provide a faster feedback loop cargo also provides you the cargo check command so what the check command does is that it skips the entire code generation path and only does a semantic and syntactic analysis of your code base so if i now run cargo check on the same project and let's compare this with the cargo build command which should take more than eight seconds and this took us 19 seconds compared to the cargo check command which took us eight seconds so that was cargo check command now cargo also comes with built-in support for generating documentation for your projects so let's say i have a library project where i have a public function named foo and i want to write documentation for this function so i can do three forward slashes and write the documentation and then if i go back to my terminal and invoke cargo doc this generates the documentation for this library so if i go to the target and doc folder you can see we have html related source file so now i can serve this folder using let's say the python http server module and then if i navigate to this url and from within the demo lib folder you can see we have the generated documentation for this library and here we have the same doc comment that we wrote for our public api foo so that's how easy it is to write and generate documentation for your projects using cargo so that was a quick tour of the most frequently used cargo subcommands in the next video we're gonna jump right into the rust programming language and we're gonna build our very first usable command line application and we'll go over the concepts of the language as we build the application so i'll see you in the next one